Hello, good evening, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brendan Circuses, and this is my 15 questions for feminists. Um, I, I this, this, this is meant to be serious, and I would like it if feminists would uh, respond to them, if at all possible. Um, I will not censor anyone. Uh, if anyone wants to do a response, uh, a video response or a response in the comments section, please feel free to, and I will respond as best I can to any of them. Um, I will. The questions will be posted uh, below in the uh, comment section as well as in the video description. Number one. Do you think feminism is about equality of the sexes? In my conversations with uh, feminists online and in real life, uh, I found that about half of them uh, claim that feminism means equality or that it strives for equality between the sexes. And the other half uh, claim that it's solely about women's rights and that men can basically go fuck themselves for all they care. Uh, if you believe feminism is really about equality and you believe that feminism should indeed be striving for gender equality, then please continue watching and please answer these questions. Um, if, however, you're in the other camp and are not interested in gender equality, then please don't answer because these questions weren't meant for you. Uh, question number two. What rights do men possess in the first world that women do not? As far as I can tell, there aren't any. I don't think we possess any rights that women don't. Uh, I can have a list a number of uh, p rights that women have that men don't. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the right to bodily integrity, or the right to vote without the potential to uh, have to serve in the military, or the right to innocent until proven guilty uh, when it comes to rape accusations, or the right to make a formal accusation uh, of rape against another person. Men can't do that. Uh, number three. If you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should have equal rights, why does this not extend to reproductive rights? Uh, I have never once seen a feminist advocate for a man's paternal rights, uh, like um, uh, legal paternal surrender, uh, which is sometimes called financial abortion, or uh, being considered equal under the law in custody battles. Th these things are necessary in order to make things equal between men and women, and I have time and time again seen feminists advocate against men having these rights and others related to reproduction. Number four, if you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should have equal rights, why does this not extend to rape? Under the law in England and America and Canada, the law is written in such a way that only a man can rape, specifically stating that rape must be forceful penetration of another person by a penis. This means that under the law, women can't rape men. Forced envelopment, as far as I'm concerned, should be considered rape. It is, it, to my mind, exactly the same. But we do not have this. This is not the way it is. So, do you advocate for this? I believe you should. Number five. If you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should have equal rights, why does this not extend to genital integrity? Uh, this one should be less uh, contentious, as I've, I've come into contact with uh, more than a few feminists who believe, as I do in this regard, uh, under the law in England, in Canada, in America, uh, female genital mutilation is illegal, and rightfully so. But male genital mutilation isn't. Uh, it is considered one of the most vile, reprehensible things a person can do to forcibly mutilate the genitals of a female infant. But the same cannot be said for males, who don't have... They have no such protection. To those of you who say, well, you know, it's worse for girls, or male genital mutilation is, is not that bad, or even that we just shouldn't care about men's rights at all because women are... I don't know, more important for some reason. Uh, I have to ask, why not advocate against both? I, I advocate against female genital mutilation and male genital mutilation. I, I believe they're both bad. Just because you feel that one is worse than the other doesn't mean you can't oppose both. Murder is worse than rape, in my opinion, but I think both should be illegal. I think they're both wrong. Just because one is worse than the other doesn't mean you can't be against both. Number six. If you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should have equal rights, why does this not extend to the courts? It is well known that there is a race uh, disparity in sentencing in Western nations, with black people normally receiving uh, greater sentences than white people for the same crimes. This is wrong, and I oppose it, and you almost certainly do as well. Uh, but there is, in fact, a much larger disparity, and that's between the sexes. Uh, men are sentenced to significantly longer um, to, to terms and other types of sentence than women are. Um, 
in fact, this divide between the sexes in terms of sentencing is significantly greater than it is uh, between uh, the races. And I have never once heard a feminist even mention it. And this is because, as far as I can tell, feminists don't actually want equal rights. Number seven, why strive for equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity? As I, as someone who believes in equality of the sexes, think it's wrong to give an unfair advantage to one demographic over the other. If you do too, then you should oppose female-only shortlists, or female-only scholarships, or even minority-only scholarships, and of course, quotas for businesses, for uh, universities, for governments, etc. If you want people to be equal, you should be in favour of some sort of meritocracy with equality of opportunity. Because if you believe that women cannot do as well as a man in a meritocratic society with equality of opportunity, then you think women are worse than men. I happen to think that women are just as capable of me as men. Number eight. If you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should be treated equally, why is it considered rape if a man and a woman who are intoxicated engage in consensual sex where the man is assumed to be a rapist and the woman a rape victim? See, I'm of the opinion that if you consent to becoming intoxicated by imbibing alcohol, then you are responsible for everything you do whilst intoxicated. And this includes sex. You could not use this excuse uh, if, if, you were, if you were drunk and it was another crime. Say uh, you drunk drive, okay? You couldn't say, it's not my fault I ran those people over, I was drunk. You couldn't do that. So how come women can use this, this same excuse to turn consensual sex with a man into rape. Number nine, if you claim that feminism is about equality and that men and women should be treated equally, why is it you oppose men's rights activists who are only attempting to do the very thing you claim to advocate for, ensuring that both men and women are treated equally under the law and that neither unjustly holds any rights or responsibilities that the other doesn't? Now, of course, if you don't oppose men's rights or men's rights activists, then feel free to ignore this question, but the vast majority of feminists I've come across do. Uh, number ten, if you believe in the gender pay gap, uh, the glass ceiling, all those kind of related things, uh, stuff that's been debunked for quite some time now, and you believe that we need more women CEOs, etc. Do you believe we need more women garbage workers, sewage workers, mechanics, builders, truck drivers, white goods delivery people? Where, you know, the kind of thing where the vast majority of workers are male. See, these jobs typically are difficult. They're outdoors. They, they require... Um, that skill and hardship, they're more likely for you to, to die in. They're, they're, they have uh, longer working hours and more unsociable times and so on and so forth. And this broadly explains why women tend not to do them. But uh, if you believe that, say, women should be uh, pushed into CEO positions or whatever, that, that there should be very luxurious high-end jobs that women should automatically get uh, by virtue of only being female just so that we have more women doing them, why is it not the same for these other jobs that women clearly don't want. <clears throat> Number 11. If you believe that we need more women representing us in Parliament or Congress or whatever the equivalent is where you are, please explain why you think that democracy should be suspended and that you as a feminist should be allowed to dictate who is and is not given power over the people without their consent. Uh, as it happens, I think people should be allowed to vote for whomever they wish. Whoever, anyone should be able to run, like it is now. Anyone can run, and anyone should be able to vote for whoever they want, like it is now. Uh, if you believe that the people's choices are not good enough, and that you should get to choose more women to go in and just automatically be part of Parliament, then you don't believe in democracy. Uh, so please explain why not. Uh, number 12. If you believe that men and women should be treated equally, then why are you not advocating for increased funding to male-specific illness research or advocating for men's health organisations? Because uh, this kind of organisation, uh, they exist for women and they receive government funding and that kind of thing in the West. Uh, and far more is spent on female-only illnesses than male-only or even like joint sex illnesses, despite women on average living significantly longer than men and having more powerful immune systems, that kind of thing. There's, there's this disparity between... Um, how much funding uh, illnesses receive, like research into illnesses they uh, receive, based on their sex, and it does favour women significantly, uh, kind of disproving the whole we live in a patriarchy thing. Uh, number 13. Uh, considering 
that between 40 and 60% of domestic abuse victims are male, and the vast majority of domestic abuse cases go both ways, with both men and women abusing one another, why do feminists paint it as a crime of male violence against women? Uh, the same with rape. Uh, and why uh, are there a huge amounts of women's shelters uh, that get given government money and so on and so forth, but there are very few that cater to both sexes, or even fewer, that are solely for men? Do you think this should change? Because I believe that it should. Number 14. Uh, if you believe the dictionary definition is enough to justify feminism's advocacy, then why can the same not be said for the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea? That's an interesting one, I think. Uh, number 15, final one. If you are a strong, independent feminist who needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, then do you believe in chivalry? Or hashtag give your money to women? He for she? Or having standards lowered in areas like the armed forces, police force, firefighters, and so on and so forth, in order to make it easier for women at the expense of men? If so, how do you justify this? How do you uh, accept both of these things without a great deal of cognitive dissonance? Uh, if at any point you use women's place in the third world uh, to justify your position on, on feminism in the West, please explain how the two are actually linked, uh, because they tend not to be. It's usually a total non sequitur. Um, and also what you're doing about women in the third world, as I've never actually seen a feminist do anything about women in the third world, and why you're not advocating for rights of men in the third world, who are also treated like shit, because everyone gets treated like shit in the third world, regardless of sex. Okay, uh, this has been my 15 questions for feminists. Uh, please, please respond, um, and I'll try and get back to you. Interested to hear your answers. Fuck off, everyone, and good luck.